Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here and welcome to my review of Doctor Who The Time Warrior, the first story of Doctor Who season 11 and the first story to feature Sarah Jane, uh, part of the stickers come off a bit, so I was trying, I think I, it was in a pack, uh, you know those packets that they, that they come in, um, so I think it was on the top of that so I moved it to the front of the cover, so yeah, and this was one year after Sarah Jane, the DVD came out one year after Sarah Jane returned to TV screens in School Reunion in Series 2. And I think the release of The Hand of Fear came out that year to coincide with that, well, a few months later, I believe. Um, that three Sarah Jane Fourth Doctor stories came out that year. Alongside that was Genesis of the Daleks, which was about the same month as School Reunion, and The Sontaran Experiment, which, which was in the autumn. October. I think the Hand of Fear came in between, and that had a sticker saying Sarah Jane's final classic story. And so, yeah, I'll show you that when we get to season 14. And then this came a year later. Ironic that Sarah Jane's final story came out the year before her first story on DVD. And you, and because of her reappearance in series two and the start of her new spin-off ser series that started that January with the pilot episode, and would come along. As a proper series in the alt in September of that year, they obviously capitalised on it with releasing this story and giving us the sticker uh, on this one as well. So the Time Warrior, but how does this story just hold up? Well, this is a good story, but I think it went down a little bit in my opinion on the rewatch. I, mean, I had it at nine originally, but I think I've I've lowered it a little, not much. I still haven't rewatched the rest of the series just yet, but at the moment. I honestly think it's probably the best one of the season. And whilst Three Doctors, it took me a season to confirm this, although prior to that, Pla uh, Planet of the Daleks had been first. And also Day of the Daleks, had that had been first, and it took me a season to confirm that. But I had a bit more fun on rewatching that season, including Day of the Daleks, not so much the mutants, but the other stories were a bit more fun. Um, Ten... It was a story change, and it just moved the first story of that season to first place. Um, I think season seven, my favourite story, was Spearhead from Space. So apart from season eight, my favourite story of each of the John Pertwee years has been see the first story. But we'll see when we get to the end of season 11, but I don't think it's likely to change. Uh, just saying so. So that means the rest of season 11 is worse. Uh, possibly. Well, we'll see. Um, the story is kind of, is takes place in the his, in medieval times and a Sontaran called Lynx crash lands to Earth and he has to repair his spaceship. However, some of the stuff they don't have there does, uh, won't help him with, um, isn't very usable. He, he can't use stuff from the medieval times and he has to look elsewhere and he eventually time jumps to the future to get scientists from the 20th century to help fix his ship. This is where the Doctor comes in, and he is at a research centre where scientists are disappearing. Uh, note that the Brigadier and some members of the unit appear in the first episode, but do not in the remaining three. We'll see them in the next story, though. And obviously the Doctor comes back when the dinosaurs, dinosaur invasion and the martial law is in place. So I guess that was right afterwards. This, that's why he was away for quite a while. And the Doctor has, when he discovers that a Sontaran is kidnapping people, he eventually goes off uh, goes off to try and find them. He's also joined by new companion Sarah Jane Smith, played by Elizabeth Sladen, who makes a great first entrance, and she's got some great... Ba she and John Pertwee work off each other super well. There is a little bit of a feminism underlying talk with her character. Then again, there is a little bit of sexism with the Doctor. But there's also a bit of the Doctor kind of being a bit ag agitated by them. However, I do think that at the end of the story, they are pretty good friends by the end. Um, and also, Sarah Jane's not saying as much feminism stuff as in the Time Monster, so it doesn't become as repetitive, nor, uh, yes, we know, okay, got it. 
uh, moments from the audience. Uh, P.S. I am also a feminist. It's just that in the Time Monster, I was uh, with the character just saying stuff like that. It was just felt like a yes, we get it. Uh, but it doesn't happen so much with Sarah Jane. That it's absolutely fine here. Um, far fair enough, uh, fine enough. And the two work off really well, as I've mentioned, and they do have this great chemistry. And you can tell why the chemistry worked throughout the rest of the season. Although I do think Sarah does work a bit better with the fourth Doctor, but we'll get to that. But you can tell it's already off to a good start. I think the third Doctor is a bit prickly with all of his companions when it comes to the start, including the Brigadier. Um, maybe not so much Benton and Yates, but certainly with Liz, maybe not too, ba too bad with Liz, but certainly the Brigadier Joe and certainly Sarah Jane, he's been a bit prickly with uh, to start with, but would develop the relationship over the next couple stories, especially considering what we said last year about with, not last year, last season, with Joe's, de his, and, his and Joe's relationship development over the ninth and tenth seasons. So I, I expect this, this season will develop his relationship with Sarah Jane before the regeneration into Tom Baker. Um, there's also some stupid humans in this. We've got some, uh, we've got Iron Gronk, who I actually don't mind. He's a He's a prick. No, don't get me wrong. But I don't mind him. I suppose that's how his character is written. And the actor does a good job with playing such a prick. And someone you absolutely want to hate. And want to, want to be killed or stopped. But he does, a, he does a good job. And has some really good stuff. As does Bloodaxe, his associate. And they're actually quite fun to watch. They might even have some light comedy in places. Though how... There is a shot at the end of part two and reprise from part three. By the way, the reprise of part three cut, uh, includes quite a lot from the end of part two. It only cuts a few little bits of the start of the courtyard uh, wide angle shot and fight. But that, the end of part two, the Blood X and uh, Iron Gron are in a room with uh, Lynx. And then it's, they're in the corridor with the third Doctor and he... And that's where he strikes Iron Grong, as Iron Grong puts it. So that's odd. And also, the, like I said, the proprietor part three, it goes on too long. I think it should have started from the midway through during the battle. Uh, during the battle. By the way, really good uh, uh, long angle, long shot, uh, uh, stab, uh, wide angle from above. Uh, I think bird's eye point, a really wide, wide uh, bird's eye point of view uh, shot of the Doctor fighting some Iron Grong blood axe and the men in the courtyard from looking down from the barracks and it has to look really good. There's another shot later on with the Doctor and Sarah Jane running through the courtyard from the same angle in part four I think and the Doctor is also again once again he and Sarah Jane disguise themselves as monks to get into the castle when he does a great Irish accent similar to his great Welsh accent in the previous story so yeah, more talented stuff from John Pertwee, and he continues to be great. I think some Doctors who go on a bit... Uh, I think certainly Tom Baker, when he was getting to the end of his era, he was starting to get a bit tired of the role. I mean, he was dedicated to it, but he was starting to get a bit tired around season 18. Uh, John Pertwee, despite doing the same thing for five years, and not really having that uh, too much of a change uh, in terms of the character portrayal, I mean, maybe personality, there's been a little bit of change in terms of he, him warming up to his companions, but apart from that, there hasn't been that much of a character change for the first Doctor, and uh, to see John Pertwee continuing the same, doing the same stuff here as he did in season 7, season 8, but still doing it with 100% commitment is great to see. So, I have no faults with John Pertwee. I do find his Doctor a little bit um, rude, in some spots when he's talking to Sarah Jane, but most of the time they have a good relationship, as does... And Sarah Jane can be a little bit rude and annoying in some places, but other times she's pretty great. I think the best stuff with the two of them are in the third and fourth episodes, and that's where most of the chemistry uh, it works really well, although their chemistry in the first scene they have together in part one is also really great and has some great moments. So, yeah, Lynx is also a pretty good villain and has some great stuff, and this is... There's this fun uh, scientist who helps out uh, that the Doctor and Sarah met in part one and then they meet up again in parts two, three and four, I think. He's in he's in the medieval 
times and there's also a, a great uh, side character uh howdy archer he's a great as uh, uh the uh, earl, of we earl of essex and his wife they're all great characters to pop up in the story it's just it's a good story i just don't love it i just didn't quite enjoy it the last time round. um Igron may be a is a bit annoying. I mean, his character is written like that, and I don't dis I don't hate him beyond the fact that I have to hate him as a because he's a evil villain. But I didn't hate I didn't grip my teeth when he was on screen. I was annoyed at some points, but I didn't grip my teeth like some other characters, like one we're going to have later in this season. Oh, Chancellor Orton, I am dreading watching your screen presence. Um, but overall. Time Warrior has some great sci-fi and medieval stuff thrown into it. I think maybe it does go on a little, it does feel a little draggy in some spots, but it feels fine overall. And yeah, I think it's a decent first part, uh, first season opener. I think it's probably the weakest season opener of the Pertwee era, considering the other stories were 9 out of 10, apart from the first one, which was a 10. But I still think it is a decent and enjoyable story and hey, it's the one that got Robert Holmes the script editor role uh, job in uh, season 12 uh, up to at least season 15 I think certainly when with Philip well whilst Philip Hinchcliffe was producer and maybe a little bit into Graham Williams's era before Douglas Adams took over um, and he still broke for the show after that so that's pretty cool as does Terence Dix in some at some points so that's cool um, but yeah, so the Time Warrior, I'm going to give this story an 8 out of 10. Yeah, I didn't enjoy it as much as I used to, but I still think it's a really good story and has some great stuff, and there's also some really good stuff. The Doctor seems to notice on Tyrants before, which Expanded Media has taken up, plus the fact that the second Doctor met them in the two Sontar, uh, the two Doctors. Uh, that's cool, so Robert Holmes is able to tie that in with that story. Uh, and also, like I said, uh, Expanded Media, the first Doctor definitely meets them in an old Big Finish audio. Possibly possibly a lost story is it a lost story i'm not sure it is or maybe it's a companion chronicle but he certainly meets them in a big finished production and there's probably some other first second and maybe even earlier third doctor stories with them and there's been there's a there's a couple of other sontaran stories i think the eighth doctor meets them at one point and um, yeah it's a shame the sontarans only appear in four times in the entire classic series they've got this one they've got a story next season one in season 15, so that's two fourth Doctor stories, and the two Doctors with the sixth, and sixth Doctor joined with the second Doctor, and then you don't see them until 2008 uh, with the tenth Doctor, and that's the last proper Sontaran story. We have had Sontaran cameos, uh, like in the End of, End of Time and Pandaric Opens and Commander Strax in the Paternoster Gang stories, but apart from the last Sontaran and uh, Enemy of the Bane in the Sarah Jane Adventures, the Sontaran Strashtrum and the Poison Sky are the last proper Sontaran stories. Um, but we'll get to that when we get to that. That's season 30, or series 4, I should say. Uh, season 4, uh, series 4, aka season 30. Uh, at the moment we're only on season 11, which means we've done the first 10 seasons. Yes, only only another... We've got to go to 37. Um, 27, only 27 to go. Yay. Uh, that's the entire classic series in series 1. Uh -huh. Well, I suppose after we've done this series, we've got the equivalent of the entire classic series mine to go, and we've done the new series instead. Hmm. Yeah, we've done we do the equivalent of the new series, and we would have the equivalent of the classic series to go. Anyway, anyway, but that's it from the Time Warrior. That was a good start. Next time we'll be looking at Invasion of the Dinosaurs, which I've only watched once, but I wasn't wasn't the biggest fan. Jack McCulloch, shout out by the way. Uh, this is his least favourite John Pertwee story, so yeah, he um, we'll see how it uh, goes. I mean, I might like it, but it might uh, just... I mean, last time I liked it, but not much. So we'll see how it goes, and then we're on to Death to the Daleks, which I think I prefer over this one. Then the Monster Paladin, which used to be one of my least favourite. Uh, is one of my least favourite. One of my least favourites. Used to be the number one least favourite. 
And then we've got Plants of Spiders, which uh, I find weaker than the other two regeneration stories we've had at this point. And possibly weaker than Logopolis. But definitely weaker than Caves of Androzani. Definitely weaker than Bad Wolf Park and the Ways. Probably weaker than End of Time and Twat. Time the Doctor, maybe twice upon a time. Mm, no, maybe not that. Not that one. I think it's worth better than that. I think it's better than uh, Twin Dynamics. Certainly better. Yeah, certainly better than Twin Dynamics. Certainly better than Time the Ronnie. Not as good as the TV movie. Not as good as Night of the Doctor. Not as good as Day of the Doctor. <coughs> so yeah, Planet of the Spiders is probably my least favourite of the first four Doctors regeneration stories, and one of my lesser favourite uh, classic ones. Uh, certainly in the bottom half, I think. It's that or Logopolis. Um, if we could do Doctor Who 1 to 6. Because the 7th was in the TV movie. But anyway, so that's it from me. Thank you for watching. Next time, Invasion of the Dinosaurs. Or Invasion, in the case of the first episode. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. <laughs>